Throughout the history of hunting, never have we seen a deer send a lasting shockwave throughout the entire community quite like the Rumpala buck. Splitting the industry in half and creating more questions than answers, this infamous buck sits center stage when it comes to the most controversial whitetails ever to surface. The story begins in Traverse County, Michigan, an area that is not known for large deer, but home to some exceptional hunters who accept the challenge that comes with Northern Michigan. Mitch was synonymous with one of the hunters that looked up to the challenge of hunting Northern Michigan. His friends had called him Swamp Master and he had the reputation of shooting big white tails on a consistent basis. It's even reported he held the Missouri State Archery record and then he topped his own record again after a few years. Although after doing some digging, I cannot locate any literature to confirm these records, it is clear that Mitch had a reputation of being a successful big buck hunter. Folks that knew Mitch closely during this time frame would compare him to almost basically being a deer. He spent all year in the woods stalking whitetails and just completely infatuated with big bucks in the big wood setting of Northern Michigan. Throughout this time, Mitch was building a reputation in the industry and was writing magazine articles and making partnerships with manufacturers in the outdoor industry and doing his best to make a living working in the outdoors. Before we get too far into this, I wanna say this is easily one of the most controversial stories in the whitetail world and everyone's opinions are supercharged. We're gonna dive into the internet and see what we can learn. Feel free to form your own thoughts and opinions. So here we go. It was November, Friday, the 13th of 1998, when Rapala released an arrow on what would allegedly be the new world record that would surpass the Hanson buck, the deer killed by Milo Hanson that held the top spot at the time, only a few years prior. Its rack allegedly scored 220 and 6 eighths inches typical and would net 216 and 5 eighths inches, making it the largest typical of all time if entered and accepted in any record keeping organization. When Polo said he hunted the deer for three years prior to killing it and also stated that he had actually missed the deer about a week before. When he shot the deer, he knew it was a good shot, but he elected to go home and get the video camera. He proceeded to then record the recovery. The news slowly got out that a new potential world record was shot, but the story quickly got momentum. With three years of history, you'd think there'd be some additional documentation about the buck and you're right we're gonna get to that later jumping right into the post recovery of this buck one of the most forgotten sources in the rumpola buck story was another man who saw the buck bill bailey of honor michigan at the time bailey was an 18-year veteran conservation officer with the grand traverse band of ottawa and chippewa indians in the december 6 1998 issue of the traverse city record equal bailey told staff writer bill o'brien that he took several family members to see the rumpola buck I saw the deer. I saw it closely, Bailey told O'Brien. I handled the deer. He added that there was no questionable open doors with it. Bailey also discounted rumors that Rumpola somehow attached the rack to the animal. Ridiculous, he said. Something like that would be pretty easy to tell. According to the first deer and deer hunting article, three official antler scorers put their hands on the Rumpola buck's rack and all three declared it was the 100% legit rack. Gary Berger, 59 from Michigan, was an official scorer of Boone and Crockett and Pope and Young, and more with decades of recording experience at this point, was joined by Lee Holbrook and Al Brown, who they themselves were not new to scoring bucks of this stature, spent over two hours examining and scoring the Rumpala buck. They concluded after much deliberation that not only was it legit, but it was larger than the Milo Hansen buck which was the largest buck at the time ever documented. The rack was very impressive the first time I saw it, and nothing has changed the second time I saw it. Berger told Deer and Deer Hunting in 1999, I saw the skull plate and how the antlers attached to the skull. I've seen a lot of skull plates and a lot of horns attached to skull plates. Everything looked real to me, and I know some Michigan DNR people have seen it. A lot of people saw it after he killed it. I felt it. I inspected it. It's real. Even though it was believed to be real by the scores, this rack was never entered into any record book, though in early 1999 it was scored 216 and 5 eighths net inches on behalf of the commemorative Bucks of Michigan. What made the lack of entry into the CBM curious was that Mitch had previously served as the club's scoring chairman. But not everyone had a similar experience on the following events after this alleged giant Michigan typical was shot. Gordon Whittington, the former editor of North American Whitetail, and who's also a very well-known expert who has covered some of the most historic bucks to ever known to exist, 
had this to share. As the story got out, hunters everywhere wanted to know more. But after the initial flurry of information, details were even harder to come by. It was less than a week after he reported the kill. Mitch got an unlisted phone number and dropped out of sight. Why that was is unclear. All right, now let's look at some of the information that Gordon shared directly on his research on North American whitetail titled Rumor vs. Reality. Gordon stated, am I claiming the Rumpala buck is real? No. And why not? He has three reasons. The rack didn't look real to him. He said Mitch steadfastly refused to prove it's real, even though doing so would benefit him and others directly. And number three, he had seen photos that weren't available to the public. Here's a direct quote from Gordon. To me, the antlers simply look like what you come up with if you're trying to fool somebody with a rack fabricated from synthetic materials, sheds, and or an assortment of spare parts. My view is based on experience, which isn't proof. However, in the absence of documentation that the rack is real, what but experience can any of us draw on? I've closely examined all of the world's largest, biggest whitetail racks that have been confirmed as real, and I've never seen another one with nearly so wide of a gap between the burrs, nor has anyone else I know. While this is by no means proof that the Rumpola rack is a fake, it makes me highly suspicious. Two of his most vocal critics in Michigan and each had put up $10,000, which they said Mitch could collect if he just have the rack x-rayed and enter it into BNC, but not even that could spur the man into action. Gordon also states, when we combine these questions with the fact that the measurers couldn't see the underside of the skull plate, it was on a nearly finished shoulder mount at the time of scoring, which Gordon states, I'm even more leery. I've talked to all three measurers and believe each is honest and knows how to score a rack. However, I have this nagging fear they were weren't given a full opportunity to verify the rack's authenticity. Now, as we mentioned, Mitch had three years of history of the buck and he did have photo images of the buck. Gordon had the opportunity to see photos that haven't publicly been circulated and it'd be perplexing if they'd surface today. Gordon stated, when I saw the field photo of the deer, the view began to change. Again, it just didn't look right. Plus, I no longer could contact Mitch. That in itself was a first for me, though again, it proved utterly nothing. Nothing. But as much as anything else, I was quite suspicious of two live photos of the buck, both of which turned up after the first story broke. Mitch allegedly snapped one of the shots with a 35 millimeter camera a few days before he said he killed the deer. The blurry photo showed the buck from the rear with the head stuck out from behind a tree. A scent dripper also was visible in the photo. Now, as you can imagine, taking a live photo of a 216 inch typical, it's fair to say the photo would be blurry. But Gordon didn't feel like he was looking at a photo of a live deer. The shot had been taken from the only possible angle that would have allowed anyone to explain away the lack of a deer's body in the photo. My impression was that someone had set up a shoulder mount on the far side of a tree in order to shoot a photo for a scent dripper ad, but I was told the shot hadn't been staged according to Gordon. Gordon stated a year or so later, he was at a hunting show looking at a photo album in the booth of a manufacturer who originally told me about Mitch's pursuit of the deer. As he flipped through the pages, he came across an eight by 10 color print that showed the buck from the front bedded in the snow, this time with much of his body visible. I asked the guy when that photo had been shot and the photo was supposedly from December of 1997, roughly 11 months before Mitch claimed to have shot the deer. Now, this was really getting interesting. If the photo was of a live deer, it couldn't have been taken any later than early 1998 because of the snow. At the time of the reported kill on November 13th, 1998, it hadn't snowed in that area all fall. Problem was, it looked to me that the rack on the live deer was a carbon copy of the one of the buck Mitch posed with in late 1998. I feel safe in claiming that the rack on no whitetail buck is exactly the same two years in a row. But standing there looking at that shot of the bed of deer, I satisfied myself that his rack and the one in the quote unquote kill shot were undistinguishable. Gordon stated, how could that be unless the same rack had been moved from deer body to deer body? for photo purposes. He said, if I'm right and trust me, I looked over that photo pretty hard. I submit that this is as compelling an argument as any against Mitch's claims. Furthermore, Gordon states, it goes without saying that video footage of the live deer, which is actually far easier to get than a still photo, particularly in dim light, would have made Mitch's case infinitely stronger. Gordon also states, lacking proof that the Rumpala buck was bogus, he said, I finally just moved on as many others in the outdoor media has. It seemed there would never be any sort of closure to the story because Mitch kept refusing to remove the clouds of doubt. But in the end, he did make what Gordon believes was a telling move. Milo Hansen's business associate, John Butler, grew wary 
of the claims about Michigan's new world record buck. Those claims were making it hard for John to book the Hanson buck display into hunting shows. Because many show producers still assumed the Rampala buck was real and bigger than Milo's certified record. Finally, John gave Mitch's camp an ultimatum. Prove your deer's real or tell everyone operating on your behalf to quit calling him the world record typical. Faced with the threat of legal action, Mitch quickly signed a settlement in which he agreed not to enter his deer into the BNC record books as long as Milo has the record. Nor, per the agreement, can Mitch refer to his rack as world record. He can't even publicly display it or a replica. It's worth noting that Mitch received no money in return for signing away his right to enter the rack into the BNC. This proves nothing, but I think it bolsters the claim that he didn't have a potential record to begin with, according to Gordon. Now, there's been claims that Mitch rode off into the sunset and has never done anything ever since, but when doing research for this, it appeared in the fall of 2009, he still had a website live and even with recent pictures. Unfortunately, that website is now expired. With all this being said, head to the description of the video, take your time to read through some of these incredible resources about this notorious story. The biggest question is, will we ever know the full story? Will new information emerge? Time will only tell.